Uh, epidemiology and outcomes of AKI in hospital and ICU. Uh, epidemiology and outcomes of AKI in hospital and ICU. Apparently. Ah. Um, this is my conflict of interest slide. Um, this is a very useful paper when I started this, uh, preparing this, uh, this talk. World Incidence of AKI, a meta-analysis. And it, it compiles uh, essentially all um, studies uh, reporting on epidemiology up to 2013. And as you can see, it's highlighted in, in yellow, the incidence rates of AKI that were reported in, 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 in all these papers was about 20%. 20% of uh, patients uh, are reported with acute kidney injury, and this um, was associated with a mortality rate in these patients of also uh, 20%, a little bit more, 24%. Uh, but you also get the information that there's, there's, there's variety in, in, in mortality. As you can see, Northern Europe, 40% uh, incidence rate of acute kidney injury, and uh, the other end of the spectrum, it goes up to 30% um, um, in Southern Europe and Northern Africa. And there's, there's wide variation. And I will go a bit deeper into that variation that's reported uh, in, this, uh, in this next slide. What's also very clear, and it's, it's also demonstrated in the previous talk, is that increasing severity of acute kidney injury is associated with increased risk for mortality. And stage one is, all, uh, is already associated with a, a higher risk for mortality co compared to no AKI patients, and stage two even more, more higher, and stage three even more higher. So that's very clear. And this brings me to uh, the question that was posed um, just before. Um, AKI is a syndrome, it's not a disease. And um, it's uh, multifactorial, as John said, heterogeneous. There's multiple hits, uh, typically, in, in our patients. Uh, there's different severity and duration. And um, there's an, a, a cloud overlying uh, this all. Um, there's a different underlying disease in our, in our patients. And this probably explains uh, the differences in, um, in incidence rates and also the difference in outcome that's reported in, uh, in different studies. So let's go a little bit deeper into that. I identified uh, a few topics that I want to discuss with you um, that could um, uh, explain the differences in, in epidemiology. Severity of acute kidney injury um, is already uh, talked about. Higher severity rate of acute kidney injury is associated with, with, with higher mortality. Underlying disease could uh, make a difference. Location, I will, I will explain that a little bit later. Uh, the differences in uh, creatinine criteria and urine output criteria, duration of acute kidney injury, age, and there may be others that uh, mod modify uh, the epidemiology also, but I will not go into that. Location. It makes a huge difference if a patient looks like this, uh, a hospitalized patient, or if it's an ICU patient. Uh, hospitalized patients have, a, uh, indeed, uh, it's repeatedly uh, shown an AKI incidence or occurrence rate of about 1 in 5. 18% in this study uh, from Shigeru Chino in, in Australia. 80% of patients admitted to the uh, emergency room uh, had acute kidney injury. But of course, uh, there's huge variation depending on the underlying disease, and this is illustrated uh, um, in, in this uh, slide. This is a uh, uh, a meta-analysis uh, we did on cardiorenal syndrome type 1, and of course cardiorenal syndrome type 1 is, is, com is, is, is compiled uh, or, or, or um, different diseases can lead to cardiorenal syndrome type 1. So uh, we see that acute heart failure is associated with a very high incidence of acute kidney injury. Almost one in two patients will have acute kidney injury uh, when they are hospitalized for acute heart failure. Uh, while uh, cardiac surgery patients and acute coronary syndrome patients have a much lower incidence. So the underlying disease makes a huge difference. And this also uh, translates to outcomes. There's different outcomes for different underlying diseases. AKI, AKI and ICU patients, there's also underlying disease if your patient is severely ill and admitted to the ICU. Um, uh, textbooks um, report 
is still the same incidence rate um, as in hospitalized patients, or, or we, we, we tend to see that in, in, in the older textbooks. One in five um, uh, ICU patients will develop acute kidney injury, but uh, in the uh, current uh, rifle KDGO era, we now know that um, um, much more patients meet these uh, criteria for acute kidney injury, and this is uh, data from the AKI EPI study uh, on which um, some of you probably contributed, uh, and a big thank you for that. The paper is, um, is revised several times, and, um, um, and I hope it will be published very soon. And as you can see, that in this uh, large multi-center study uh, in which we ask to um, uh, measure occurrence rates of acute kidney injury within a one-week period in ICU patients, we saw that one in two patients in the ICU, 57% 57% actually develop acute kidney injury. And also, um, uh, remarkably, 13.5% of them were treated with renal replacement therapy, therapy in the first week of ICU admission, which is a bit higher than the estimates that, uh, that were reported, uh, let's say, 10 years ago. Uh, again, we saw there was increased uh, risk for mortality, uh, with increasing severity stages of AKI, and this is adjusted odd ratio for mortality, and you can see stage one was not uh, really uh, independently associated with mortality. The, 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 the confidence interval hits the, I'm not uh, using the right, the, the confidence interval hits the, the one line, but uh, there was kind of a trend, uh, and stage two and three uh, had marked uh, impact on mortality, even when adjusted for other um, variables that could account for, for this mortality. And uh, as you can see in this, uh, in this overview of a selection of, uh, of papers that classified um, acute kidney injury according to RIFL, Aiken, or KDGO, now we see that uh, one in three or uh, even two in three patients in the ICU uh, are reported with acute kidney injury. And this uh, variation can probably be explained by differences in the study cohort, by difference in the, in the use of the definition. Some definitions only use creatinine criteria, some uh, measured only on day one or on a, on, a, on, a, on a small period of time. So that can explain a little bit, but there's more. Um, as we saw in, in, in this AKI-6 study that was performed in six centers um, around the world, two in the USA, two in Australia, and two in Europe, one in Vicenza, as you can see, uh, that there was a marked uh, variation in incidence of, a, of, a, of, of acute kidney injury among these centers. And this, uh, this uh, variation persisted even when we corrected for, for differences in baseline characteristics. A remarkable uh, finding. And even more remarkable, uh, there was a difference in outcome. So some centers did better than others, uh, which was, uh, well, it's a bit disappointing if you're, if you're in, in, on the bad side, of course. Uh, and even when we corrected for other uh, variables, there, there was still a signal. So there was a difference in, in, in how, we, uh, how we are uh, treating our patients and, and what, what is, how this relates to outcome. Puzzling data. I don't have a good explanation for that. AKI EPI, uh, we also analyzed for differences in incidence and uh, mortality in different continents, and as you can see, there's a difference in, uh, in incidence, that's the, the diamond here, the incidence is uh, higher in Africa, Northern Africa that is, or Australia, New Zealand, compared to Asia or South America, and there's a difference in mortality also. This is the observed mortality and this is the predicted mortality, and you can see there's a difference between continents. However, when we corrected uh, for baseline characteristics and other confounding uh, variables, we could not find any uh, signal anymore. So, um, corrected for baseline characteristics, the incidence, and also the outcome was the same. And this is staggering data. The income. When we classify uh, countries according to the country income, we see that the incidence and the outcome of um, acute kidney injury in ICU patients it's the same in patients uh, who are treated uh, in lower or middle income countries compared to uh, high income countries. So this makes you think uh, 
that we're not spending our euros or dollars correctly uh, at present time, treating our patients with AGI. Urine output, a uh, fascinating uh, topic uh, brought here to the attention by my son. Um, John already alluded to it. When you have two AKI patients, one with oliguria and one without, the patient with oliguria is doing worse. That's, that's, that's known for, 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 for several years already. And this is nicely illustrated in this uh, Kaplan Myers slide non oliguric, oliguric. And John went a little bit deeper into that in this uh, fascinating, and, and, and I, I can highly recommend reading this paper uh, in Jason, uh, and in which he, he teased out the relative contribution of the urine output and film creatinine criteria uh, when you define acute kidney injury in, in ICU patients. And as you can see, it's a busy, busy table, but the, um, the outcome for patients who are classified according to urine output criteria is similar when they are classified according to serum creatinine criteria. So if your patient meets acute kidney injury based on urine output criteria, the patient has the same outcome when uh, the patient uh, is classified on based on um, serum creatinine criteria only. However, fascinating is that when the patient is classified on both criteria, when the patient meets both criteria, mortality is, is doubled or tripled even. So um, combination of these criteria makes a, makes, a, makes a whole difference. And this explains, uh, this, this is, a, is already an explanation for the huge variation we, we see in, in, in papers on epidemiology. Low risk patients compared to high risk patients. And low risk uh, is uh, patients who are at baseline not mechanically ventilated or not treated with vasopressors. So not so sick patients. And as you can see, the low-risk patients, the upper lines, have a, a better uh, outcome to, compared to the high-risk patients. However, when you compare the low-risk patients without AKI to the low-risk patients with AKI, you can see that the difference in outcome is similar to the difference in outcome between high-risk patients with and without AKI. So AKI has the same signal on, on mortality, on outcome, in low-risk and high-risk pa patients. Fascinating. Uh, data. Duration of AKI. It makes sense that shorter duration of AKI has less impact on outcome. And actually, uh, the majority of our patients have short durations of AKI. This is uh, data from uh, Shigo Chino again. And you can see the majority of patients with AKI are, uh, have AKI periods uh, ranging from one to three, day three days. And as you can see, these transient AKI patients have increased risk for mortality. However, this risk is much less compared to the uh, more persistent duration of acute kidney injury. However, uh, when you correct for severity of AKI, as this French group did, um, there's no difference anymore uh, for, for duration of AKI. So this kind of suggests that it's not the duration of AKI, but the severity of AKI that's making the, 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 the most difference in, on, on the impact. Older age, uh, older patients are more likely to develop acute kidney injury, and this is uh, illustrated in this, uh, in this uh, incidence rate bar chart. As you can see, uh, older pa patients have higher incidence of acute kidney injury, um, and this, of course, is because they have more comorbidity and uh, therefore are more likely to develop acute kidney injury, and also their kidney baseline kidney function is less, and therefore they are more likely to develop acute kidney injury. So you would, it makes sense, and you would think it, it would be easy to, to predict uh, in these patients that they will, are more likely to develop acute kidney injury. However, the, contra the contrary is, is true. It's, it's less easy to predict acute kidney injury in older patients, uh, the AOC uh, of the rock curve is, is, is not so high, 0.67, compared to younger ages, a, uh, patients. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's more easy to predict uh, occurrence of acute kidney injury in younger patients compared to older patients. So it, it kind of suggests that there's other things that play a role. Uh, besides uh, the usual suspects we put into our multivariable uh, regression models. Are we doing better than before? 
Yes, we are. A bit depressing is that the incidence of AKI is increasing. Uh, there's lots of uh, papers suggesting that. Um, however, um, papers in recent years do not confirm this, uh, this finding. So um, this is, again, from the, the World Review of uh, uh, Epidemiology of Acute Kidney Injury. Uh, the risk for developing AKI, uh, as, um, as published in, 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 in studies, is actually decreasing recently, uh, according to this analysis. And uh, for this, uh, this intriguing finding, I, I, I analyzed the, the proportion of patients treated with RRT in, in our ICU over the last um, seven years. And as you can see, uh, in these seven-year periods, there's not really a trend for increasing occurrence rate or incidence of renal replacement therapy. It, there, there was no trend, actually. There was no significance. But if there is a trend, the trend is, either, is actually a bit uh, going down. So this kind of confirms that maybe we, we had an increase of incidence uh, till recently, and now we are kind of uh, on, a, on, a, on a plateau phase. Uh, we need more data for, to confirm that. But it's, it's intriguing data. What's, uh, what's, uh, what's good is that the mortality is going down. That's, uh, that's being uh, repeatedly shown. Um, but of course, there's more outcomes than mortality we should think of. Acute kidney injury, uh, a patient with acute kidney injury uh, has some, some, some extra attention, uh, needs some extra attention, because they are more frequently admitted to, to, to the hospital after the, the discharge. Um, the, a certain number of these patients are uh, dependent uh, or stay dependent on renal replacement therapy, uh, as, as seen in discharge. And it depends a bit uh, on the study you're looking at, and there's, there's lots of uh, explanations for that, and we will, we will discuss this uh, in the upcoming days, but there's, there's, a, there's huge variation, and uh, up to one in four patients is treated with renal replacement therapy on long term. And there is a signal on long-term mortality, as has been repeatedly shown in, in different studies. And um, they don't uh, not only die, but uh, one of the explanations for this uh, higher mortality is probably the occurrence of chronic kidney disease. And uh, as we see it now, AKI and chronic kidney disease are, uh, as it's, it's put in this title, interconnected syndromes. Patients with chronic kidney disease are more likely to, to develop acute kidney injury, and after they develop acute kidney injury, they are more likely to develop chronic kidney disease. And this brings me to the End of my talk, uh, AKI is frequent. One in five hospitalized patients will develop AKI. One in two uh, ICU patients will develop AKI. There's a stepwise increase in mortality according to the severity of AKI. Patients die or, of AKI or they develop chronic kidney disease, and that's something we should think about and that we should have follow-up of these patients. And over the years, we have seen, seen a change in case mix and an improvement of outcome. And still, there's lots of known unknowns and unknown unknowns, um, of course. Um, and one of the unknown unknowns, or known unknowns, I'm not sure, is, um, is, is on, on the topic of renal replacement therapy. Uh, we, there's huge variation in how we are using renal replacement therapy in our ICU patients. And um, uh, to get a better grip on that, we are actually now conducting uh, uh, a follow-up study on the uh, AKI EPI, the P study, and uh, people who are willing to participate are more than welcome to, um, to have a look at the website of the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, uh, go to the research trials group, and there's a, there's a piece, and you can still participate in this trial. There's a, the, the trial is going on June 17th, and if there's much more interest, I, uh, I, I think we we can add another study date to that. Thank you for your attention.